check, check, check. There we go. Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the California Academy of Sciences. We're so excited to have you here today for our African penguin feeding. My name's Jennifer. I'm a staff member here at the Academy. If you're just joining us, if you just find yourself joining us, feel free, come on in. You can grab a seat right here in the front. Now, we have a very fantastic program for you today. We'll be talking a little bit about our penguins. We'll be learning all sorts of different things about their habitat, about some of their adaptations, and of course, we'll be feeding them now we need someone to be able to feed them and this is a very important person someone who's integral to this program so why don't we give a big welcoming wave to our fabulous biologist hi hi everybody hello Piper how are hi, you Jennifer doing how are you I'm good thank you oh fantastic we are doing very well on this side of the exhibit if you find yourself joining us feel free grab a seat if you find yourself in front of the benches you can grab a seat right there excellent so Piper um, what are we feeding our penguins today what's on the menu for them I have two types of fish in here in this bucket I have a, a small fish in here called a capelin and then I also have a larger fish in here called a herring um, these are very comparable fish to what they would eat in the wild. These guys usually eat stuff like sardines and anchovies. Uh, they are an endangered species, so we try not to feed them what they eat in the wild so those guys in the wild can eat. Um, so we feed them herring and capelin. Absolutely. Here at the Academy, everything... Oh, looks like we have maybe some vocalizations. Bit it's of a getting, scuffle. Yeah, getting pretty rowdy in there. And Piper, if you, need an, um, if you need a minute or two at all, feel free to let me know. Thank you. You're, you're a pro. You're a pro. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> well, um, that's absolutely... Absolutely right. She was mentioning everything that we feed our animals here at the Cal Academy is sustainably caught, sustainably harvested. And that's very important because these African penguins, for example, are endangered. And she was mentioning that a large part of that is because of overfishing. So uh, one great way to help out African penguins in the wild is you can grab one of these seafood watch cards. It has lots of great suggestions for seafood options so that we aren't taking uh, extra seafood from animals who might need it in the wild. So you can come on over after the program and grab one of those from me. Um, Piper, I noticed there's something on the ground by your feet. What is that? There is. There's a scale next to we put a scale in this exhibit. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm rewarding the birds who step up on the scale with a fish. This is a training program that we've had with the, with the birds for quite a few months now. Um, it's important for us to get weights on these guys and to be able to um, tell whether the birds are losing weight, gaining weight, and without us having to actually pick them up and do that is a big deal. And so all the birds are able to get up on the scale, which is what we like, and then once we do, once they do that, we'll reward them with fish. Absolutely, and it's very, very important work. As Piper mentioned, it helps make sure that our penguins are nice and comfortable in the exhibit. That way we don't have to pick them up. We don't have to make them agitated. Um, we have lots of different types of trainings and lots of different types of enrichments for our animals here at the Academy, whether it's our giant Pacific octopus, whether it's some of the rays or the shark in our lagoon exhibit. Um, Piper, what's an example of some of the other enrichments that we have in here? We do have, um, we offer all the animals here we, um, enrichment. And so some of the enrichment that we have in here um, will have some uh, auditory enrichment sometimes as I was saying um, we'll put on different different bird calls different animal sounds in this exhibit we also have an interspecific um, exhibit here which means pretty much that we have other animals living within this space it's not just penguins we have sea urchins down here which is where we would live in the same area as these guys sea stars and we even have pajama sharks living in this exhibit which is really awesome it gives the public an eye into what would be existing out there as well Wow, pajama sharks, that's incredible. So lots of different critters living in this exhibit here. It makes it a much more exciting exhibit for our penguins. Um, now, has anyone here noticed, are they chewing their fish or are they swallowing it whole? Yeah, they're swallowing it whole, and that just shows that they have some pretty incredible adaptations that help them survive and thrive in this environment. Now, has anyone here ever held a wet fish before? 
maybe you've gone fishing, maybe you've caught a fish. If you feel it, you know it feels very, very slippery. And these penguins, they actually have some pretty incredible adaptations that help them catch their fish, don't they, Piper? They do. It's a really awesome adaptation I really like about these guys. They have, well, you guys can see those beaks. They have those harpoon-like beaks, super sharp, one of the sharpest beaks of birds out there. These guys need really sharp beaks because if these guys weren't eating from hand from us, they would actually be having to catch live fish, which is a really important thing for them to do. Um, also, what they have within those beaks is really, a really awesome adaptation. They have comb-like structures sticking um, from both their top and their bottom beak, and they stick up and downward from top, and that actually um, gives them the ability to actually catch fish catch those squirming fish and keep them kind of steady and take them all the way down their throat. If, um, if I was feeding in the water this morning, you might be able to see a little bit better how they take those fish down, but they are, they're able to catch those squirming fish and get them all the way down their throat. Now, I can heard th I've heard that they can be a little bit picky, Piper. What do you think? They can be very picky, so I'm trying to give everybody what they want, um, and it doesn't always work out. But if these guys are hungry, they're going to eat both types of fish. Um, we do have one bird in here that's going through a molt. He looks a little bit larger than the rest of the birds. He's going to be pretty hungry right now. He, he'll go through the molt, and he'll lose all his feathers. Beforehand, he's going to eat lots. So usually that bird eats lots of herring, this larger type of fish. But when he's hungry, he's going to take both of them. But yeah, we do have some picky fish these guys were all born in captivity so they've all been hand raised oh that is so so interesting it's so fascinating to learn a little bit about their different habits their different um, mannerisms in the tank now piper you mentioned that they're all born in captivity i'm kind of curious um are any of these penguins ever going to be say introduced into the wild that's a good question no they won't be all of these birds will stay here in captivity they'll they'll either stay here at the academy or we work with other zoos within the american association of zoos and aquariums um, and we work with a group also called the species survival plan um, what we do is we make sure that since this bird is a, a very endangered bird we want to make sure that we get the right genetics uh, for the future we don't want to have any sort of inbreeding and we want to make sure that everybody's healthy so we work with other zoos and aquariums we send birds to different zoos they send them to us we pair them off and then we get chicks from those birds it's important these guys are ambassadors for all those birds out there in the wild so we never would introduce them to the wild again or ever because they wouldn't be able to survive mm, you're absolutely right and it's just a really good reminder on um, african penguins they are endangered in the wild um, i mentioned the seafood watch cards earlier another great thing we can do we actually have a penny crusher and proceeds from that penny crusher go towards the conservation of coastal birds just like our african penguins right here in front of us uh, now piper you and i we've been talking for quite some time what do you say we take some questions from our audience yeah i'd love that all right does anyone have any questions for piper any questions out there yeah Yeah, that's a great question. So, Piper, you and I, we've been talking a lot about how these penguins are endangered. Um, how many penguins, African penguins, are there in the wild? Um, that's a hard number to kind of come by. Um, we want to say there's about uh, 20 to 30,000 pairs out there, but those numbers are, are dropping really rapidly. Uh, like Jen was saying, we have the, an awesome uh, penny crusher that helps groups like us and groups like Sand Cob down in South Africa, but the numbers are dropping really rapidly. That's why we have these guys in captivity we try to get the breeding going get more chicks out here in captivity so we can get the numbers up yeah, very very good question absolutely all right we have a couple more questions right here oh that's a good question so piper um my friend here is wondering what animals are in the penguin food chain so maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the things that a penguin might eat and then maybe some of its predators so some of those animals that we were mentioning before um, instead of feeding them these herring and these capelin out there in the wild these guys would eat things like anchovies and sardines um, you guys can look at the coloring of these guys another great adaptation that these guys have is counter shading so some animals that may go for them 
are animals that live in the water, that live deep below the water, that look at them, they see those white bellies, and they're not going to be able to see them. That's how a, a great way for them to keep camouflage. Things like that that might eat them are big, big sharks, maybe whales, sea lions as well. Even birds of prey will catch these guys. Um, and then where these guys are living in South after Africa, even domesticated dogs and cats are becoming, um, uh, becoming able to predate on these guys, which is a hard thing for them to deal with. So they have lots of predators out there. Yeah, so unfortunately, lots of predators. Did you have another question? Oh, <laughs> we are um, quizzically asking you, what types of whales would eat a penguin? What types of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in, I, if I mentioned whales, I don't believe whales. We have gr sharks out there, and if I mentioned whales, we've got lots of sharks out there that would eat these guys. Of course, of course. Very, very good question. We have a future scientist um, right over here. That is fantastic. Now, that tuxedo coloration that Piper mentioned, um, does anyone else, can anyone else think of any other animals that have that kind of white belly and that black back in the ocean? Uh, it's found in a lot of different animals. Do we have a guess over there? Maybe a question over there? Well, if we think about it, we actually have a couple different animals here at the Academy. Our rays, they have that kind of lighter belly and that darker gray back. And then even um, animals like orcas, orca whales, great white sharks. So this coloration, it's a pretty incredible adaptation that lots of different animals have in um, their marine ecosystems. And it works pretty well to help keep them camouflaged. Um, all right, any more questions for Piper? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So have any chicks been hatched here? There have been, yeah. Here in the Academy, um, we've had quite a few chicks have hatched. When they do hatch, they stay here in this exhibit for just a couple of days. Then they, they're fed by their parents. Then we raise them back of house for a little bit longer before they're in, reintroduced to this exhibit and then sent off if we have chick, uh, other pairs of birds waiting for them somewhere else. Very, very good question. Again, part of that very, very important species survival program. All right, any more questions? Yeah, a couple more. Oh, oh, yeah. So we're wondering how many different species of penguins are there in the world? Uh, sometimes that can range. Different people will say different things. It's usually between about 18 and 19. A very good question. And a lot of people are surprised when they walk up this e to this exhibit. They don't see any snow. They don't see any ice. Now, the penguins that we often think about are those um, taller penguins, those ones that might you might find in Antarctica. But quite a few of them actually live in this pretty mild environment. Um, Piper, what's the temperature like in there? It's about 70 degrees in the air right now, um, and then it's almost 60 degrees in the water, and that fluctuates. We try and offer these guys as uh, a seasons, seasons throughout the year, as well as um, a sunrise and a sunset. So these guys have uh, an environment that's pretty similar to where they would live. Absolutely. So, and we'll take one last question for you. Oh, um, so um, after they are hatched, what's uh, the growth um, projection for them? Like how long does it take yeah. for them to reach adulthood? So we have a bird here who was born in December. He's about uh, eight months old now. Um, he'll reach adulthood within this first year. He'll become an adult. He's still a juvenile. He'll go through a, a plumage change where he'll lose all those feathers. He'll go through the molt, and then he'll be recognized as an adult. So anywhere between a, about a year and a year and a half. All right, lots of good questions over here. Um, well, Piper, I know you have so much work to do. I'm sure our penguins are very grateful um, for everything that you do for them, and we're very grateful to be able to talk to you as well. So why don't we all give Piper a big, big, big round of applause. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining us here today. If you have any lingering questions, you can come on over and let me know. Additionally, don't forget, I do have these seafood watch cards. They are a great way to ensure that we aren't taking resources from animals like our African penguins who need them in, a, in the wild. All right, thank you so much. Have a fabulous rest of your morning.